In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern. We have kind of reached a full-blown summertime pattern, finally, where there is pretty widespread areas of thunderstorms around. Also, very, very early, uh, we're seeing tropical development uh, and, and tropical, honestly, just areas of interest across the Gulf and across the Caribbean overall for extended periods of time. Typically not seen until August, September time frame. We're beginning to see this very, very early, which isn't too surprising considering all of the puzzle pieces that we have available to this upcoming hurricane season, including the historically warm temperatures. The La Nina, among other things, are all aiding to create basically the perfect storm, no pun intended, uh, for hurricane development and tropical development overall. So we're going to dive into all these things, as well as the temperature pattern, potentially uh, some severe heat on the way for the east, finally. So we're taking a turn for the worst, honestly, over the next 7 to 15 days, I would say, time frame. There is the chance that we're going to see very, very hot temperatures. So those are potentially on the way as well. Uh, let's dive into things. Let's take a look here at Tuesday on June 11th. Tomorrow from the time I am making this video and what we see is there is some pockets of showers, both rainfall and snowfall for the Northwest. That includes Washington, Oregon, and Western um, um, Canada there. We do see a 995 over South Central Canada here. This is bringing about showers and thunderstorms both for South Central Canada and the upper Midwest here of the United States, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, we're seeing lots of thunderstorms and showers in this area as well. Then for the South Central states, mostly just Texas and Oklahoma here, we are seeing plenty of thunderstorms in this area also. So just many different areas dealing with thunderstorms and showers. Even the eastern seaboard, some isolated activity is around for many different areas. Now, kind of the main story, and I'm going to try to talk about it a little less in this video because I really feel like I focus a little bit too much in on it, but I do want to talk about it, of course. We see plenty of tropical uh, disturbance in here uh, for areas west of Florida, over top of Florida as well, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, over Cuba, all of these areas, and then also just to the north of the Bahamas off the southeast coast of the U.S., we are also seeing areas of lower pressure and storminess in there. So all of this is kind of just of tropical concern, of course, being over record warm temperatures. Let's take a look at Wednesday on the 12th, the day following. And again, kind of near the Canadian border is going to be the best chance for thunderstorms and showers for all of these areas. We also see near Texas and Louisiana, we're seeing some thunderstorms and showers. And then for Florida and surrounding areas in the Gulf and Caribbean, we again have plenty, I mean, I'm talking miles, hundreds of miles of thunderstorms, showers, and overall tropical interest, as I've talked about, as uh, potential development will be watched for in this area. Uh, we do see a little bit of some growing low pressure off the southeast coast here, especially by Thursday the 13th, just in a couple of days. This is going to be interesting to watch here. This pocket, as this could potentially pose a threat uh, to any of the North Carolina coast, perhaps further northward, uh, we would have to see, you know, no matter how weak it is, if this area pulls towards the east coast, that will lead towards storminess, potential flooding, and potential wind, regardless of tropics or not. Uh, we do see for kind of the, again, southern Caribbean, Bahamas, and some of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, we are, again, still seeing a lot of tropical interest in this area. And we're still seeing some thunderstorms and showers here, especially in the northern plains, upper Midwest, and Great Lakes, but not too much as most of it's reserved for Canada where there's numerous amounts of activity up there. For Friday here on June 14th, what we're seeing is a pretty well-developed tropical system that is now kind of turned further offshore. Again, there's a chance this would impact the East Coast. This model is saying the opposite. Uh, and this is a 1,001 millibar, so this is a developing potential tropical system out here off the East Coast. In about four days from now, so four days from now, this is not some long-range forecast. This is a model, the European model, a very well-respected model, perhaps the best in the world, according to some, calling for a tropical disturbance here or potentially even a tropical cyclone in four days during the midpoint of June. Not unheard of, not even abnormal for one of these. I think what's more abnormal is just this pocket of overall tropical activity that looks to stick around. Now, we are seeing some areas of thunderstorms. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about the tropics here. We do see the four corner states, the Rockies, the northern plains. They're seeing some thunderstorm activity. Also, some showers still for the northwest. We do see the mid-Atlantic and northeast as well. 
seeing a pocket of thunderstorms in this area also as your jet stream is pretty flat but there's a minor trough in the east and a minor ridge in the west here i would say as we progress towards saturday here on the 15th uh, we see that this tropical system has really moved offshore of the east coast it's very far much closer to bermuda it might even be uh over bermuda or uh east of it by this point so very far offshore of the east coast of the united states uh, we do see that there are showers and thunderstorms around east of the Rockies here, extending all the way into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes here. So this pocket is really, really where we're going to be watching for thunderstorms and showers. Of course, we still have some showers, both rain and snow for the Northwest by this point. Sunday here on the 16th, what we're seeing is a 993 over South Central Canada. Overall, some storminess in both the western and central regions of Canada, and then the northwest and the north central of the United States here as a result of that low pressure system. The Gulf is just covered in activity, which again is a bad look for just how warm the temperatures are there. Pretty concerning. Uh, let's move this towards Monday here. We see a lot of this is going to take aim at Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma by this point. Still some pretty bad thunderstorms for the northern plains, upper Midwest, and Great Lakes here. Tuesday on the 8th, what we're seeing is again the middle portions of the nation both as a result of this gulf energy and kind of this inland uh, area coming from canada we are seeing thunderstorms from many different states in here for the day on tuesday also our second tropical cyclone potentially during this model run in the southern gulf of mexico there is taking place by tuesday the 18th a little further out this time we will take that with a grain of salt but this one Gets all the way down to a 997, so developing a little bit further here in, again, the southern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but this would be the second tropical cyclone in a week during June, which is extreme, uh, if you ask me. Uh, and then that kind of hits Mexico and dissipates. We still have a lot of tropical moisture in that area, though. And really, for the entire Gulf and Caribbean, we have tons of tropical moisture, which is what we've been calling for for very many months. So shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you. We do see overall a lot of ridging here in the east, and this is going to bring those, again, very high temperatures that we'll talk about in a second. Total precipitation, we can see that the upper Midwest, northern plains, and Great Lakes gets the most over really the non-tropical areas. Um, but near the Gulf and near uh, Florida, as well as near the southeast, we are seeing above average amounts for Texas, Louisiana, Florida. And then it wouldn't take a lot to see a lot of this get pulled closer to the southeast, uh, but only time will tell. A lot of activity in this area, though, is the theme, of course. Let's take a look at this AI European model. We want to get beyond hours 240 and see what this one says for this tropical activity. And we really keep up the trend. Uh, we still have a lot of activity here in the southern Gulf and then over near the Bahamas and some of the Caribbean in here. We do have more and more tropical activity. So perhaps more systems to track in the long range. Uh, if we end up with, you know, numerous systems here, even I think the southeast area and mid-Atlantic coast could be seeing some sort of activity. Uh, this is really extreme and definitely, definitely not normal whatsoever, as I've reiterated time and time again. Um, just nowhere near this time of year are we supposed to be seeing anything like this. Uh, maybe August, September peak hurricane season in a, in a quieter year would look like this. Um, but no, not during June. This is very abnormal. And definitely nothing like I've ever seen, for, for sure. Uh, as we take a look at the temperature pattern, again, we are dealing with a minor trough here in the east for now. With warmer temperatures prevailing out west, as you can see. So we have this ridge here, trough here in the east. But over time, we are going to see warmer temperatures kind of return to the east. And it really starts with this cooler air mass being able to infiltrate the west here. We call this a negative PNA. And this, over the long range, is basically going to trend towards warmer temps here in the east so let's keep going and we see things warming 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 and all of a sudden we have potentially the ingredients for a heat wave for some areas here by about the 20th time frame uh, even i've seen signs at 90s and, and beyond here uh, as soon as you know the next uh seven to ten days so once we're in this kind of time frame uh tuesday wednesday of next week we could be seeing very hot temperatures for the southeast mid-atlantic northeast ohio valley great lakes midwest those areas but it only gets worse over time, actually. And we continue to see this all the way through the 25th here on this model, where we have very warm temperatures still prevailing here for these areas across the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, deeper south, south central, southeast, mid-Atlantic, and the northeast here. And then the southwest as well. Look at how warm things are here. Potentially some uh, higher pressure building. 
And then uh, some colder air is trying to move in through the northwest and north central states, but it's really just failing to push back against this warmth, which is definitely winning the battle here. This could eventually squeeze this cold air back towards the east, resetting the pattern. Of course, it's about 15 days out, so we're going to take that with a grain of salt for sure. Storm Prediction Center Outlook, here's the day one for today on Monday, June 10th. Anywhere in the lighter greens is a general thunderstorm risk area. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so be sure to heed every watch, warning, and advisory. Your darker green areas like the southeast and some of the Rockies into the plains is your level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible. And then we have three yellow areas there across the plains and the southeast, and that is going to be your level two slight risk where we expect scattered about severe weather to be possible. Day two for Tuesday on June 11th, we have a general thunderstorm risk again, and then two marginal risk areas set up. For day three on Wednesday, June 12th, we have, again, a general thunderstorm risk area across multiple states, a marginal risk, and then a slight risk there in the upper Midwest. Now, we do have a day four extended day outlook here for Thursday, June 13th, where we have at least a slight risk expected here for some of the Midwest and Great Lakes as well as the Ohio Valley here. For, again, Thursday on June 13th, this would translate again to about a slight risk. Could be worse, could be less. It is in the long range, but tomorrow it'll be the day three outlook and we'll have a little bit more to show you guys. So be sure to tune in. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.